Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're gonna be reviewing four different products that I have from the Burt's Bees Sensitive Skincare line. So I have their facial cleanser, I have both their daily moisturizing lotion and night cream, and then I also have their eye cream. So we're gonna talk through ingredients in this video per usual. I'll let you know my thoughts on whether or not I think that these products are actually suitable for sensitive skin, and just show you some application clips and the consistency of each product so that you can find out if this is worth the purchase or not. So if you want to hear my thoughts on the Burt's Bees Sensitive Skin Care line, you're in the right spot. Let's jump right into it. All right, let's start off with their facial cleanser. And quick disclaimer before we do that, Burt's Bees did send me these items for free to test out, but this video is not sponsored by them, meaning they're not paying me to upload this. All opinions, regardless of whether or not a brand is sending me free product or I purchase it with my own money, which for the majority of the time I'm purchasing these things with my own money. Regardless, my opinion is always honest and what I share with you guys is always the truth and at least my truth. That doesn't mean that it's going to be the same for everybody, but I always tell it like it is. Hopefully you guys know that by now, just because a brand sends me something for free doesn't mean that I'm gonna give them a pass or let something slide. I will be extremely transparent no matter what. So. Okay. This cleanser has six ounces of product in it and retails for $8.69. On the back it says, gently free your skin of dirt, oil, and makeup without causing redness or irritation. Made with powerful yet gentle natural ingredients, our sensitive facial cleanser with cotton extract, aloe, and rice extract softens, soothes, and moisturizes the skin. It's hypoallergenic, soap and fragrance free, love the fragrance free, to hydrate and refresh even the most sensitive skin. Clinically shown to improve skin barrier function and leave skin looking and feeling healthier today and tomorrow when used as part of our entire Burt's Bees sensitive regimen. So what really stands out to me about this cleanser is that it's supposed to cleanse the skin effectively yet very gently and also be something that really helps to moisturize and soothe the skin. So this is going to be something right off the bat that those of you that have dehydrated or dry skin might be more drawn to, but I'll let you know my thoughts from a combo leaning oily skin perspective. So some of the ingredients that really stand out to me that help to support that claim include sunflower seed oil, that's an emollient that's going to help to soften and smooth the skin, and it's a really nice source of fatty acid, so it will help to replenish. That's actually one of those ingredients that helps to speed up skin barrier repair. So sunflower seed oil is a great ingredient to include in your skincare regimen if you do have skin barrier damage and that's actually second on the label. So that really helps to support the claims that they're making. Water's first, sunflower seed oil is second, and that in itself is going to help to hydrate, soften, smooth, and heal our skin barrier. A few other emollients that stand out to me on this label are coconut oil, cacao seed butter, and rice bran extract. So not only are those ingredients going to be really, really helpful in softening, smoothing, and nourishing the skin, but they're all actually sources of either fatty acids or vitamins and antioxidants. So coconut oil and cacao seed butter are really nice sources of fatty acids for the skin. Rice bran extract has antioxidants and vitamins like vitamin E and ferulic acid, which are really, really nice ingredients that help to protect the skin. They're powerful antioxidants. So those three ingredients are very nice emollients. The one thing I wanna quickly mention about the coconut oil and cacao seed butter is that both of those ingredients may potentially be an issue for you if you're incredibly acne prone or if you have very clogged pores because they can be comedogenic. So it really is going to depend on your unique skin, how your skin responds to those ingredients, and that's not something that I'm able to predict. I don't personally have an issue with this cleanser and I am very acne prone. However, keep in mind, I do a lot to keep my skin clear. So I use topical prescription products for acne. I use a lot of different skincare products specifically for acne as well. I'm very, very careful about those things. If you have not seen my updated hormonal acne routine, I'll put a card for that here and link it below if you are interested. But I feel like even though I am very acne prone, I may not be the best gauge for that because I do so much to keep my skin clear. But also, it's not really something you can compare person to person regardless because everybody's skin is different. All right, now let's move on to hydrating ingredients that stand out to me in this cleanser. So the first should not come as a surprise if you watch a lot of my reviews, it's glycerin. That seems to be in basically every single product that I've reviewed at this point, but it's a great humectant, don't get me wrong. I'm always happy to see that on the label. There also are a few different forms of sugar in this cleanser, which I definitely thought was interesting. That's not something I see all that often in cleansers or just any skincare 
products for that matter. And all of them are known for their water binding abilities. So they're all things that are going to help our skin to hold on to water so that it looks and feels hydrated and plump. So sucrose, fructose, and glucose are three forms of sugar. And the last is sugar cane. And sugar cane is also going to help to moisturize our skin. Other hydrators include aloe leaf juice, which also has soothing properties, as well as beetroot extract, which not only helps to hydrate, but is a source of antioxidants as well. And then the last ingredient that I want to call out is actually the one that's on the label here and is on the label of all of these products. So that is really the standout ingredient for the sensitive skin range, and that is cotton extract. So cotton extract will not only help to hydrate the skin, but it's a conditioning agent as well. And I also want to just quickly read what Burt's Bees has to say about cotton extract. I'm always curious to see what brands say about highlighted ingredients like that. So they say that softening cotton extract helps our skin to replenish its outer layer and minimize the effects of potential irritants such as harsh soaps or cleansers, making it the natural ingredient to pick for sensitive skincare. I mean, there's a lot of ingredients that are really nice for sensitive skin. Cotton extract is not the only one, but yes. It is a good ingredient. And I realize I didn't call out any cleansing agents in particular here, and that's just because none really need to be highlighted. All of the cleansing agents that were chosen for this cleanser are not only things that are known to not be drying or irritating, but are actually all for the most part known to be really nice moisturizing ingredients as well. So things that kind of serve as both a cleansing agent or surfactant and moisturizer or hydrator. And the last ingredient that I wanna give a quick mention to is witch hazel, which is in this cleanser. Witch hazel witch. And it's towards the middle of the label, so it's not within the top five. It's not something that's going to make up the majority of this formulation, but it's there. And witch hazel can be confusing in skincare because on the one hand, it can be something that can actually help to soothe the skin and decrease redness. But on the other, it can be something that can cause irritation and sensitivity. So again, not something I can predict for you. Really depends on your skin type and how it responds. But we have so many other really, really nice conditioning, softening, moisturizing, nourishing ingredients. I don't know that this should be a major concern for you. It's not like you're just putting pure witch hazel on your skin. But again, you would have to kind of test out and see how your skin responds. Actually, I lied. There's one last ingredient that I want to give an even briefer mention to, and that is denatured alcohol. The reason that I want to bring that up is because I feel like I might have a comment saying that has alcohol in it. I know that there are people that specifically look out for alcohol and ingredient labels, even though there are different kinds. Denatured alcohol, yes, is an ingredient that can be drying and or irritating, especially in higher concentrations. In this case, it's second to last on the label, so I don't foresee that being a major issue for people. It's something that has a lot of other benefits to it, like helping to improve the consistency of a product to make it more lightweight, acting as a solvent. It's actually antimicrobial. So it does have a purpose, and in this case, seeing that it's second to last on the label and something that you rinse off the face anyway, it's just not something that concerns me at all, but I know that some people look for that. Okay, now let's talk about consistency and performance of this cleanser. So as you guys can see, it's very, very thick. It looks almost like a cream or a lotion, and it feels incredibly hydrating on the skin. So you can really work this up to a nice lather. It just looks almost like you have a face mask on, and it feels so nice. So if you have very dry skin, irritated skin, sensitive skin, flaky skin, just any kind of skin that feels like it needs some nourishment and some conditioning ingredients, this is a cleanser that I feel like you may really enjoy because it definitely checks all of those boxes. And even as somebody that has skin that leans oily, I still enjoy this. It doesn't feel greasy at all. While it is very moisturizing and one of the thickest, if not the thickest, moisturizing cleansers that I own, I'm trying to think. The Hot Alabo Hyaluronic Face Wash, it's just a different consistency. That one might be a little bit denser. I'll put that review in my description box if you haven't seen that yet. It's one of the thickest cleansers that I own, but I like it a lot. I think it feels great, and for those moments when I am feeling really irritated from face masks, have flaking going on, this is perfect for me. It's also a really, really nice wintertime face wash. In the heat of the summer, which obviously has now passed us, this is probably not something I would reach for on a daily basis because I love things that have a gel-like consistency and are a little bit more lightweight, but wintertime, dry skin, dehydrated or irritated skin, great. And for me, this did not irritate my skin whatsoever. No redness, no signs of aggravation, which I wasn't anticipating because it doesn't really have anything in it that concerns me. But in this case, the witch hazel clearly was not an issue. So 
I think it's a great option if you fall into any of those categories that I mentioned. If you're super oily and don't love a very thick cleanser, then this one's not going to be for you. But other than that, worth checking out. Okay, now let's move on to their daily moisturizing cream and their night cream. And I wanna talk about these together because they're basically identical. So the daily moisturizing cream has 1.8 ounces in it and it retails for $12.29. And their night cream has also 1.8 ounces of product in it and retails for also $12.29. <laughs> so the biggest difference right off the bat is just the packaging. This comes in a jar. This has a nice pump. I definitely prefer this packaging. Jars just kind of gross me out. I just don't like to dip my fingers in things. I do have little spoons that I will use for these. I'll link those in my description box if you need something like that that I just found from Amazon. But I prefer this packaging. Okay, moving on. So both of these moisturizers actually have a lot of the same ingredients that I highlighted for that cleanser. So there's not a ton new that I need to call out here. They also have glycerin, shea butter, rice extract, sucrose, fructose, glucose, and sugar cane, beetroot, aloe leaf juice, a lot of the same stuff. The cotton extract, of course, because that's in all of these products. And the top five ingredients in both of these products are actually identical as well, and in the same exact order. So glycerin, sunflower seed oil, cetyl alcohol, those are all ingredients that they had in common with the cleanser. They're in the top five here. And there are a few ingredients that are in both of these moisturizers that you will not find in that cleanser that I think definitely deserve a quick mention. So the first is shea butter. That's a really, really nice, rich moisturizing ingredient. Helps to condition and soften the skin and also has soothing properties. Jojoba esters is another one that's really nice at helping to soften and smooth. So if you have dry, flaky skin, that's another great ingredient to be added to a moisturizer. Next is something called lecithin. That is a skin restoring and replenishing ingredient. And then finally, the last one that I wanna mention is called kaolin. Am I pronouncing that right? I hope. Probably not, let's be honest, knowing my track record with pronunciations. So that is actually a form of clay. So you may have seen that ingredient before in certain clay masks, but it's not the same thing as bentonite, which can definitely be more drying and irritating. Kaolin is definitely something that is safer for sensitive skin than bentonite clay and does help to absorb excess oils, but it also acts as a thickener. So in this case, when we have so many really nice moisturizing ingredients, it's not going to be something that dries out your skin. Of course, that's not the same thing as putting a clay mask on your face. Other than that, there are no other irritants or sensitizers on the label, which is great, of course. And then as we start to get towards the bottom of the label, I would say that's really the biggest difference between these two products is just that some of the ingredients kind of start to shuffle around, if you will. They're not in the same exact order, but the same exact ingredients are present in both of these moisturizers. So the top five identical. And then for the rest of the label, they might be in slightly different orders, but they're the exact same ingredient so there's really not that much of a difference between these two products I definitely don't think you need both I'll show you guys the formulation here so you can kind of decide for yourself if you think there's a difference or which one you may prefer starting off with the daily moisturizing cream I like this one a lot and basically the same thing that I was saying for the cleanser holds true here it feels very moisturizing conditioning and nourishing this works really well for me underneath makeup but it's also not the lightest weight moisturizer that I own. So if you prefer something that maybe has more of that gel consistency or just feels incredibly lightweight, maybe water-like, like the CeraVe PM Moisturizing Lotion, then this probably will not be for you. But again, one that I think is really good for dehydrated skin, irritated skin, because it just feels really good you feel like you're conditioning your skin. So is this something that I think would be moisturizing enough if you have incredibly dry skin? Probably not. You're gonna want something that's a little bit thicker. Is this something that I think you'll be obsessed with if you have oily skin? I think it's just going to depend. I have combo skin that leans oily and I don't think it's too much for me. I think it feels great, but I know that this type of consistency is not for everybody. And when we compare that to the night cream, you can see that these products are very similar, which is what you would expect after the ingredient label discussion that we just had for these two. Don't get me wrong, it's definitely a little bit thicker. They're not completely identical, but I think they're so similar and similar enough to where you don't need both. So it's really just going to depend. Do you want something that's a little bit lighter weight or a little bit thicker? And then maybe the packaging helps to make your decision as well. If you prefer a pump, if you're okay with a jar like this. I, 
they're just really not that different. So I think if you're very dry and a lot of those ingredients sounded enticing to you, but you worry that this might not be hydrating enough, then I think this is definitely a better option. Otherwise, there's not much more to say about those two. For what it's worth, I do prefer the daily moisturizing cream. So if you find that you have similar skincare preferences to me, I prefer this to each their own though. Okay, last we have their eye cream. So this has 0.5 ounces of product in it and retails for $9.99, which is pretty pricey. And based on that alone, I would rather just use one of their moisturizers. I've mentioned this before, you don't need a separate product to moisturize the eye area. You don't need something that is called an eye cream for around your eyes. If you want to use one, of course you can. I do have many eye creams that I really enjoy, but it's not necessary. You can just use your same moisturizer for your face and work it up to around the eye area. For me, because I do prefer facial moisturizers during the daytime that are really lightweight, I oftentimes like to use something that's a little bit thicker around my eye area, just because the skin is thinner and more susceptible to fine lines and wrinkles. Personal preference kind of thing, but you don't need it. And not only does this seem to be just not that great of a deal, it also has, again, pretty much the exact same ingredients as those moisturizers and a lot of the same ingredients as the cleanser. So shea butter, glycerin, sunflower seed oil, cottonseed extract, rice bran extract, coconut oil, sugar cane, sucrose, glucose, fructose, beetroot, and aloe leaf juice. I'm already like, what is the point? The top five ingredients are similar, glycerin, subtle alcohol. The biggest difference is that the fifth ingredient is olive oil. Olive oil is not in either of those moisturizers, so that's definitely the standout here, but that isn't necessarily the best ingredient to have in an eye cream. I feel like the benefits of olive oil in skincare seem to not be very conclusive in the research studies that I found and also be kind of debated. On the one hand, it has actually been shown to have anti-inflammatory properties as well as just helping to soften and smooth, which is what oils do, and is a really nice source of fatty acids. But on the other hand, it's actually been shown to increase water loss, which is the opposite of what we want in an eye cream. We want it to moisturize long-term. But I feel like just because of that alone, I'm like, again, what's really the point in me using this? And aside from that, two of the ingredients that we have already talked about, denatured alcohol and kaolin, are in this eye cream. And like I said, that's normally not a concern for me. And kaolin is supposed to be gentler for sensitive skin, but both of those fall higher on the label than any of these other products. So if we're using something like olive oil in an eye cream that may actually increase water loss, combined with denatured alcohol and kaolin, which can absorb excess oil. I don't know. It may actually not be the most moisturizing eye cream long term. So this is one that I personally just chose to skip. I have so many other products that I can use for the eye area, including both of the moisturizers that are sitting right here in front of me. So even though I think that the formulation feels nice. It's lighter weight than the moisturizing cream and the night cream, and it feels very, very soft. I just feel like it's completely unnecessary. It's pricier. We have pretty much the exact same ingredients as those other moisturizers, and it may potentially be something that actually increases water loss. That's not what we're trying to do. All right, final thoughts on the Burt's Bees Sensitive Skin Care line. So I think aside from the eye cream, we have some really good products here with the cleanser and both moisturizers, free from fragrance and essential oils, which are both things that can definitely aggravate irritated skin, plus lots of conditioning, nourishing ingredients as well. So I think these are all really great options. And if you are one of those people that cannot use CeraVe because it causes burning or stinging or irritation, this may be a brand worth checking out. The reason that I'm comparing those is because CeraVe is also a drugstore brand that I think is a really great option for sensitive skin and is a brand that I highly recommend. But I do see your guys' comments. There are quite a few of you that can't use CeraVe products because it causes all the things that I just mentioned. So if you are one of those people, Burt's Bees might be for you.
All right, you guys, so that's everything for this video. Those are my final thoughts on the Burt's Bees Sensitive skincare Products. You will definitely have to let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Have you tried any of these? Do you love them? Do you not love them? Are you interested in purchasing them after watching this video? If you are, I will have links to everything in my description box below. I do make a small commission if you decide to use those links, which really helps to support my channel so I can continue to purchase products to review for you guys. No pressure, but much appreciated. If there's anything else that you would like to see from me next, leave that request in the comments below. I would love to do that for you. Otherwise, my next video will be up in a few days. So until then, I hope you have a great few days.